And y'all, I know that everybody's excited about Christmas. I am too. We've already put up our Christmas tree. Once Thanksgiving was over, we already put up our Christmas tree. And we watched the movie Elf, Elf, which signifies that Christmas can now begin. Okay, so we've done that in our family. But I want to take this minute right now just to kind of back up and explore Thanksgiving just a little bit more before we head off into the next season, okay? Because honestly, I don't think that Thanksgiving ought to just be a season. I think that this ought to be an attitude that we live out. There's this old saying that says, your life is God's gift to you, but what you do with it is your gift back to God, okay? Your gift is to God is whatever you do with your life. You see, I believe that if we really live that way, uh, living with this attitude that I get to give back to God and this, this attitude of always giving thanks for the life that God has given us, what's going to happen? That attitude of thanksgiving, what it does is that it increases your joy, it increases your satisfaction, and it's going to make your life have more meaning and more significance. So for our scripture this morning, what I want to do is I want to work through the book of Psalms a little bit. I'm going to share various Psalms with you, and we're going to start off with Psalm 50, 23. So if you got your message notes, let's go ahead and pull these out. And uh, if you're online, go ahead and open that up on the Ridge app, and you can follow along. And I know, y'all, this looks like a lot of blanks, okay? We are not going to be here all day. Turn to your neighbor and say, calm down, he's got a short message. T- tell him. Turn to your neighbor, calm down, he's got a short message. It's okay. Don't freak out. Don't freak out. Okay, here we go. We're going to start filling them in right now. Psalm 50, 23 says this, giving thanks is a sacrifice that truly honors me. Okay, go ahead and fill those in. Okay, I love this. What God wants is no matter what's going on in life, just like Alan was saying, you know, God wants us to praise him. God wants us to give him thanks. And that's not too hard to understand because we like to hear thanks, right? I mean, we like to hear it when other people thank us. So why would that be any different with the relationship we have with God? And let's be honest, sometimes it is a sacrifice to give thanks to God because things aren't always going very well. Okay, but even in those difficult moments, okay, we need to learn to have this attitude of thanksgiving when it comes to God because you will be amazed at how much better you feel. And Alan even shared that in his testimony. He, he used to wonder how people got through this, and now that he's going through it, he, he feels this comfort and peace it, that only comes through God. You see... Scientists have even discovered that gratitude is like the healthiest emotion that you can have. So when it comes to your health, sure, you need to watch what you eat. You probably need to be a little bit more active. We all do, right? But when it comes to health, one thing that really helps is to be grateful. So let's talk about why we should be thankful. Why should I live with a sense of gratitude to God? And luckily for us, the psalmist kind of walks through these things. So again, I'm going to read some psalms for you this morning. Let me give you three reasons from the Bible to give thanks, and then three ways to practice giving thanks. Okay, so number one, why give thanks? Because of who God is. Write that down. That's number one. Because of who God is. Now, if God was mean-spirited and petty, there'd be no reason to thank him. If God didn't care or was indifferent about your life or the world, there'd be no reason to thank him. If God was unreliable and couldn't be trusted, if, if God was cruel and vicious, if God was weak and couldn't do anything for you, then there'd be no reason to thank him, right? But that's not who God is. None of these are true. The Bible teaches the exact opposite. In fact, let me read this Psalm 145. It says this, great is the Lord. Okay, he's not puny. He's not weak. He's not powerless. He's great. Great is the Lord. He is most worthy of praise. No one can measure God's greatness. You you cannot begin to measure just how amazing God is. And, and when I try to measure the greatness of God, one of the things I do is I look up at the night sky and I see the stars in the sky. Because that, to me, just blows my mind at how great our God is. In fact, I'll share this with you. Sometimes Clay and I are the first to arrive on Sunday mornings, and every time we arrive, it's still dark outside. And for, if you don't know this, I don't know if you know this or not, but Clay worked at the planetarium for 20 years for the school system. And so his knowledge is just amazing, and every now and then he'll drop some knowledge on me and just blow me away. But the other morning, we are unloading the trucks coming in for church, and he looks up in the sky, and he goes, oh, there's Venus. And I'm looking up in the sky, and I'm like, how do you know that's Venus, right? Like, if it were me, and somebody dropped me in the middle of the woods and was like, hey, the only way to get out of here, the only way to survive is that you got to find the North Star, and then you'll find civilization. you got to follow the North Star. I'd be like, okay, I'm just going to die, <laughs> I have a hard time finding the Little Dipper. Anybody else have struggled? Yeah, okay. 
so I'm like, Clay, how do you know that that's Venus? And he says, well, it's the location, it's the size, it's the color. I'm like, what are you talking about, color? It's white. I'm like, you know, it amazes me sometimes when people have a little knowledge of just how vast the cosmos is, right? It, it's hard to understand how great God is. Think, think about this for a moment. If God is big enough to create the entire universe and to put those stars in a unique position, that same God that hung Venus in the sky is the same God that cares for you. And that's important for us to remember because sometimes, sometimes we tend to think that God is so great and he's so big that he's not really interested in us when truth is scripture teaches the exact opposite, that he knows every detail in your life. In fact, he knows just how many hairs you have on your head. There are no problems too big. And there is no detail too small that God doesn't care about in your life. That's amazing. Let me give you a couple more reasons. The the next one is this. I spent a lot of time on that one because it always blows me away when I try to think about it. Number two is love. The way God loves you. Psalm 107 says, let them praise, let them thank the Lord for his great love. No one will ever love you the way God loves you. Not even the person that you're closest to in life. They cannot love you with the type of love that God has for you. How about this one? His goodness. He is good. The psalmist says, I will praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. Listen, everything in your life that is good, it all comes from God. Okay? If he wasn't good, there would be nothing good in the world. Everything that, everything that tasted good at the Thanksgiving meal came from God. Everything that felt good when it came to being with loved ones. You know, everything that made us laugh and smile and just enjoy life this past week. All of that. It all comes from a good God. We could go on and on and on. But these are just a few reasons to thank God. He is great, he is good, he is loving. So how can I show thanks for this kind of God who gives all of this in my life? Let me tell you one way to do it. It's just to pray. It's just to pray. It's really quite easy. Just tell him. Just say thank you. You know, I think sometimes we try to make prayers a little harder than they have to be. Like we tend to think that when I pray to God, I have, I, you know, I got to make them just big and, you know, use all these churchy words and stuff. When I think, actually, I think that that's such a turnoff to God. I don't think he's impressed with all of that. I think he just wants to talk with us. The psalmist says in Psalm 105, he says, thank God, pray to him by name. Pray to him by name. So, here's what I was saying. Let's do that for just a minute right now, because I don't know about you, but I don't do this enough. I don't just stop what I'm doing in the middle of the day and thank God like I should for all the reasons that he deserves to be thanked. So what I want to do is right now, I just want to have a moment of prayer. And maybe God has laid something on your heart, and you're like, oh, I should thank God. God for this in my life, right? Or, or maybe, maybe God is speaking to you right now and you just need to thank him because he is great. He is good. He is loving. Whatever the case, let's just take a minute. Let's pause and let's bow our heads and just take a minute to pray. And I'll close this. Thank God for who he is. God, hear these prayers. God, we thank you. We praise you for who you are. Lord, some of us, we do this all the time. Some of us, God, wait, this might be new. Or maybe, honestly, God, we just haven't prayed in a while. God, whatever the case, God, right now, we bow our heads and we just say thank you for being great, for being good, for loving us like you do. Jesus, we praise you for who you are. In your name we pray these things. Amen. Okay, so the first reason God wants us to live with an attitude of gratitude is because of who he is. Second reason, point number two. Here we go. Because of what God has done. Because of what he has done. Not just for who he is, but for what he's already done. And let's be honest, sometimes it's hard to remember what God has done in our lives when things aren't going so well. So what exactly has he done? Let me give you a few things, a few things to think about, okay? 
Uh, a few more things that come from the book of Psalms. Number one, he created you. He created you. Everybody should be grateful that he breathed life in, into you. The psalmist says this, let every created thing give praise to the Lord for he issued his command and they came into being. God issued the command and boom, you were. At the 915 service, we baptized this little precious Sebastian. Last week, I got to, um, one of the joys of being a pastor is that I get to go in the hospital with a newborn and hold them in my arms. And last week, I got to go see Mo and Jana's little one, Nolan. And every time I hold a newborn in my arms, I always thank God for this new creation. God of this universe, the great, good, loving God, he actually created you. Be thankful for that. Number two, he saved you. Not only did he create you, but he saved you so that you could live with him forever. That's incredible. Psalm 9 says, I will be full of joy because you have saved me. The third thing is, he answers prayers. He answers your prayers. Psalm 118 says, Lord, I will give thanks to you because you have answered me. If you've ever had a prayer answered, that's a good reason to be grateful. He saved me. He created me. He answers me. Number four, he guides me. He gives direction to my life. If I ask him, the psalmist says, I praise you, Lord, for being my God. And the thing is, the way God guides us is pretty incredible. When you think about all the options that God has available to him, because he uses so many different ways to guide us. We have scripture. I hope you're in it every day. He uses devotionals, like what we're handing out. He uses teachings, like on Sunday mornings. He uses circumstances through life. He uses godly people in your journey group or the people that you're surrounded with. He's, the point is, he is always at work guiding us and directing, trying to speak to us. Even though we may turn our back on him, he never leaves us. He never stops trying to pull you closer to him. That's amazing. Be thankful for that. And then the last reason is because he died for you. He came to this earth and he died for you. Colossians, I'm going to jump to the New Testament. It says this, you were dead because you were sinful and you were not God's people. Your sin destroys your life, but God let Christ make you alive when he forgave all our sins. But God brings you to life through Jesus Christ because he gets rid of the sin in our life that causes you to be disconnected to God. If someone came up to you today and said, I'm paying off all your debt, you know, you, you have no more house payment, no more car payments, all your credit cards, all gone. How thankful would you be? <laughs> in essence, that's kind of what Christ does for us. The debt that we have in life, everything that we've built up through the years, all that sin that just destroys us, Christ gets rid of that on the cross. So if God has already done those things for me, and so much more. How can I show him thanks for what he's done? Let me give you something to think about. The next one for point number two, how to give thanks for this, is to share. It's just simply share. Tell somebody about Jesus. Very simple. One of the ways you can show your gratitude to God is to tell somebody what he's done in your life. I mean, think about it. Do you think God knows Alan's thankful for what God's done in his life? Of course he does, because he just got up here and he shared about it. Think about this. If I were out in the middle of town, you did something good for me, and I'm out, and then you overhear me talking to somebody else, and I'm like, let me tell you what Joe did for me. And I'm just sitting there bragging on Joe, or I'm bragging on you and what you did for me, and how you worked, and how you helped me. You would know that I'm thankful for you. It's the same thing with God. Tell someone about him. And you know what? Honestly, during the Christmas season, Easter season, this is the best time to tell people about God because they're more receptive to hearing those types of stories. So share. And then the last point, number three, is because of what God has promised. His promises. God is not done with you yet, and that's good news. God's not finished doing great things in your life. He has more planned for you. And the reason I can say that is because the Bible is filled with promises. Do you know there's over 7,000 promises in the Bible for you and for me? Isn't that amazing? In fact, the psalmist says this in Psalm 71. He says, I'm going to praise you because you are faithful to your promise. God, you have promised things, and not only do you promise them, but you back them up. Do you know, one of the things that my little girls used to say all the time, if you're a parent, you've probably heard this a lot. Do you promise? Do you promise? Do you promise? 
You know, if you ever say that they can do something or they might be able to buy something or we're going to go get some snacks or something, they'll immediately come back with, do you promise? And if you're like me and you're, you don't want to commit yourself, you'll say this, we'll see. <laughs> and as soon as I say, we'll see, they're like, oh, man. Because <laughs> they know that's my way out, right? We'll see. Think about this, y'all. God has every right to look in our lives after everything we've done, and he has every right to say, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how I'm feeling. We'll see how you do, if you deserve it or not. God has every right to do that, but that's not who our God is. Our God makes promises to us before we're even born because he loves us that much. That's amazing. He doesn't have to make promises, and yet he does. Have you ever said thanks for that? Let me give you three of his promises real quick. If you're having a hard time remembering what God has promised, number one, salvation for saving you through Jesus. He promises life after death. You know, some, some religions actually preach reincarnation, like you get to come back, like, is that, that, like that's a prize. I get, you know, I get to come back as something else or someone else. I, I don't know about it. This world is, is filled with tough heartache. You know, I'm thankful. I'm thankful that there's salvation for me that once this life is done, that I'm promised eternity in a perfect existence with Christ. Number two, not only does he save us, but he cares for us right now. God promises to care for your needs while you're on this earth because it is tough. Like I just said, it is, it is tough. And the Scripture says that if Jesus cares for the birds that fly through the air, how much more does he care for you? And then the third thing is his presence. God's presence is always with us. No matter what you go through in life, he will always be with you. And this is good to hear because a lot of us know what it's like to be abandoned. By parents, by a spouse, by a friend, it hurts. God says, you can always count on me. He is always present with us. And here's the cool thing. The cool thing is, it is never conditional. You know, it's never like God looks in our life and is like, if you do this or when you do, then I will. No, 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 no. God says, when you accept Jesus Christ in your heart, his presence through the Holy Spirit is with you always. Even though you run, his grace continues to pull you back. So how can I show thanks to God? For a God who says that I'm going to take care of you, I'm always going to be with you no matter what. Here's, here's a good way. Here's the how under point number three is to serve. Look for ways to serve them. Because here's what happens. When someone promises to do something nice for me, you know what it makes me want to do? It makes me want to do something nice for you. Yeah, that's just natural, right? If you make promises to me, I'm going to promise to, and then you live up to those promises, you know what it makes me want to do? It makes me want to serve you. It's the same response with God. How, how do we serve God? We serve God by serving others. That's how we do it. When you do something kind for someone else, Jesus literally says, like, this is how you show that you're serving me is when you serve someone else. And so that's why we give you projects like stockings, buying tube socks and filling them. It, it's amazing to think that that's a way that I can show thanks to God, that I can serve Jesus through building a stocking. And they're bringing them back to the church because I'm serving for someone else. So, are you thankful? Are you thankful for who God is, for what he's done, for what he's promised? If you are, are you expressing it? Let me leave you with this last verse real quick. Colossians 2 says, Be strong in the faith just as you were taught and always be thankful. I know things might be tough, and I know this Christmas season, as we move into it, things might be different right now. But I also know that no matter what's going on in life, there's reason to give thanks. And if you do, if you learn to continually give thanks to God, to always be thankful, you'll be happier, you'll be healthier, and you'll find more satisfaction in life. Let's pray together. God, there are so many reasons to give you thanks. You are great. You are loving and you are so good to us. Jesus, we praise you for who you are, for what you've done, and for what you promised to do in our lives. God, even in those hardest moments, we can find reason to give you thanks. 
So Jesus, as we leave here today, may we honor you with thanks and praise through prayer, through sharing, and through serving. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, thank you so much for being here. I am very excited about starting the Christmas series next Sunday, so invite someone to be with you. It's going to be a great message series. I love you all. Have a great rest of your holiday weekend, and we'll see you next Sunday. You're dismissed.